Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're on the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Colin Dixon's on the hooks, I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's a C and Z up on your radio. And now three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we here. Welcome. We are back. So thankful that you guys have tuned in to another exciting episode. I'm joined here by our Small Business Administration Entrepreneur of the Year, none other than Mr. Clay Clark. Welcome, Clay. Shika bang bang bang. And Jason Stewart. Hey, hey. Incredible web designer. We have an exciting, exciting topic to talk to you. Thank you for tuning in. We're talking about 17 steps to maximizing your profit margins. Hey, listen, if you've owned a business, you want to own a business, this is your episode. And guess what? You got to take it seriously because to the degree that you take these seriously and you focus, that's going to be the degree that you're going to excel. And check it out. If you don't focus and take this seriously, Clay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a quote here to, to tell you what's going to happen. You know, it's by Mr. Peter Drucker. This is what he said. The only things that evolve by themselves is an organization in an organization is our disorder, friction, and malperformance. Let me just read that again. The only things that evolve by themselves in an organization, <laughs> by themselves, disorder, friction, and malperformance. Clay? Well, it's just a deal where, like, if you're not intentional about creating a specific culture of uh, performance and profitability, you're going to end up with a culture of neglect, of uh, malpractice, of last of... of non-profitability of it's just not going to be good it's going it's to drift and so what peter's saying i'm going to read it one more time he says the only things that evolve by themselves without you know without you and i stimulating them in an organization are disorder friction and malperformance so we're going to talk about 17 specific steps to maximize your profit margins step number nine improve or remove poor performers. I'm going to kick it up by reading a notable quotable by Mr. Warren Buffett. Heard not, about not Buffet, Buffett. I've heard about this guy. He's allegedly very successful. It, it, yeah, he is. Come on, somebody. This is what he says. Chains of habit are too light to be felt until they are too heavy to be broken. Ooh. Ooh. What does that mean? Yeah, Clay, break it down for us, brother. Well, here's what I will say. Um, Jason, I'm going to pick on Jason, yeah. and I, I'll tell you why I like Jason. Yes. And this is a true story, and I, I, uh, um, I am not just saying this because he's here. Um, my wife hears the real story. We come home. My wife says, how are you doing? And I say how I'm doing. I don't tell you how I'm doing. I don't tell you how I'm doing. Yeah. I tell my wife how I'm doing. Yeah. And my wife says, how are you doing? And I've always said very favorable things about you because of your habits, your habitual, uh, the way you do things. Okay. So you've always been ethical. And so because you're always ethical, when we went to the Oilers game together, yeah, I'm not like, he'll probably get hammered and end up getting arrested. You know, I mean, <laughs> I, when you were, we're building a website together, I'm not like, he'll probably take all the money and run to Spain. Yeah. I mean, I've just never <laughs> had these issues. Right, right. So there's a lot of people we have concerns about. That. Sure. I mean, do, do we do we not have concerns about these things? Oh, I mean, yeah. do we not? I yeah. mean, Jose, maybe you know different people than I know, but I mean, just saying, a lot of times you, you, you go, so this morning, yeah. true story, I get a guy, he says, I want you to know. I have a disease, and it has allowed me. I can't come to work today. I'm the true story. I can't make it up. Wow. Awesome. A disease. I said, a disease. Wow. Mm. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, are you going to be okay? Well, I'd love to come. So I literally have to reschedule. I'm true story. Today, it's Friday. I had to reschedule three things with one of our production guys, Dan, to accommodate a guy who claims he has a disease. Mm. So I see the guy today, and the disease apparently is like the drunk disease. You know, if you're up late night on Facebook and Instagram and whatever, it's kind of easy for people to see that you've been up since four in the morning on, you know, various things. So the disease is probably, you know, all I'm saying that is because it's a habit. 
So without even saying it, I communicated it non-verbally. I called the guy. I said, the guy sends me a text. I can't come in today. I'm dealing with some stuff. I have apparently a medical disease. A medical disease. That's a lot of syllables. A medical three disease. That's five syllables. So, but, so you go on Facebook. There he is. You know, and so you kind of see like you definitely don't have a medical problem. Yeah. All I'm saying is that that's his habit. It's his habit force. Mm. So we know that his habit is to not be consistent. So without even him saying anything, both myself and the guy who works with him, we both assume we probably know <laughs> what your deal is. And so we look him up. But these habits, okay, these chains of habit, we felt these chains of habit. We knew mm. when he said, I'm not feeling very good, we knew what that meant. So what I'm saying is that, like, without too much research, we kind of assume something else. So what does this have to do with what we're talking about? How does this help you grow your business? How does this help you improve your life? You've got to remove poor performers. Clay Clark, me, I have to remove that guy. So you say, well, if you're doing this training, why didn't you remove that guy? I'll tell you why. Because we do interviews every week, and when I do interviews every week, if I find somebody who's clearly better and more qualified and more equipped to take the position of this person who's not doing their job, I will make the move. Yeah. But mm. we have interviews. Jose, you've probably seen Marshall does them every week. We have the group interviews coming in. Yes. We probably have you know 30 people. I mean, on Tuesday nights, we probably have four people show up, 30 people say they're going to be there. And every week, we're just like, we're weeding. We're weeding out people. Mm. So that's why when you come to work every day, you yep. get to work with you because you guys are quality guys. Yep. Because every yep. week, if someone's a poor performer, and I'm not talking about picking on people with problems. I'm talking about people who are choosing to be non-productive. Right. We mm. have to remove poor performers. There's a pattern of that poor performance. <clears throat> so yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on you for a second, Stu, and I'm going to pick yep. on you for a second. Cool. Stu, you've worked with us for a while. How quickly can you tell someone's a poor performer? Stuart, real, I mean, honestly. Well, oh, man. Blunt force. Oh, man. Tell me. Come on. So many Come examples. on, Stuart. Come on. How, how, about, um, how about we had a guy <laughs> on his first day that was yeah. like three hours late. Oh, and, and was this the guy who also claimed that you told him he could have his own office? I think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the true yeah. story. Yeah. <laughs> I go downstairs wow. and this guy's in his own office. Yeah. Like he's like the boss. Yeah. <laughs> he's supposed to be working underneath you. And it's I'm a like fast promotion. Then. And I'm like, home skill it. Hey, home skill it. Hey, I'm not, so no, I'm not kidding. I literally said to the guy, I said, Hey, do you do you um do, do, why are you down here? And he goes, Oh, well, Jason told me that I could I could have my own office down here because it's too hot upstairs. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm like, He did? Yeah. Well, I mean, he didn't say I could technically have my right. he said he wanted me to be comfortable. I'm like so he said you wanted you to be comfortable on the team? Yeah. So that's why I have an office down here. So he didn't yeah. say that you could actually have an office downstairs. Yeah. He just said he wanted me to be comfortable. He filled in a lot of gaps with that. Yeah. 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 So we're downstairs and he's like all about Facebook. He's all on whatever he's on. He's not at all working. But you can tell real fast. He didn't last long. Yeah. Yep. And I'm just saying you can tell. So you, you've you done direct selling where you, I mean, just to <laughs> brag on you a little bit. How Thank big you. was your team before you guys moved on to something else? But how big was the team before you decided to kind of move Over on? Over 100,000. You had 100,000 people on your yeah. downline in the world yeah. of direct selling. It's like yeah. multi-level yeah. for those you don't know. On could mobile. You, mobile. Could you tell when someone was weird? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, I mean, how, could you, could you, how quickly could you tell? You're the nicest guy in the world, but how quick, we're trying to help drivers. How quickly could you tell? Uh, within the first 60 seconds, man. Yeah. First 60 seconds, you can tell uh, they're nonverbals, they're verbals. Like, you go back to that to the commitment level. It's just a skill that either you got or you don't. Thrivers, I have a great lady working in her office today that I met. Great lady. She comes in her office today. Great lady. Love the lady. She comes in. Nice lady. She, she, she decides that she's going to dress to impress. She's shadowing today. I was with her for maybe 40 minutes. You could tell she was like, I want this job. Therefore, I am going to dress to impress. Now, being blunt, did I go on Facebook to spy on her? Oh, yeah, because I'm a boss. That's yeah. what I, do. I spy, you know. So I go on there, and she looks a little crazy on the Facebook, just being real. Looks a little like, you know. <laughs> but she comes in dressing to impress. She tells me, hey, I want this job. I need this job for my kids. I want to be here. And so, you know, pull her aside. Okay, cool. 
Well, but you can tell she wants the job. And all I'm saying is she wants to be here. I don't care where your, where your past is. I care about where you're going. There we go. So it's so, so important, Thrivers, that we get this. If you have these underperformers, you've got to remove them. But That's somebody it. who's had a bad history or a bad break or they made some bad decisions, it's okay. We can give them a chance. But yep. you've got to remove underperformers because if not, the customer will remove you. Ooh. Bottom line. Boom. That was powerful. <laughs> Step number 10. Look for underutilized resources. And I'm going to kick it off, you guys, with a notable quotable by W. Edwards Deming. He's one of the top managing gurus, right? Yeah. Top, right, 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 he's, right. One of, he's one of the top management gurus in the history of like the planet. So if you, we'll put up his stats and his, his, his details here in a minute on the screen. But Just wanted to get that affirmation from you, He's me, a brother. guru. Yeah. There we go. This is what he says. If you don't understand how to run an efficient operation, new machinery will give you new problems of operation and maintenance. The sure way to increase productivity is to better administrate man and machine. That's a great quote, Clay. Well, we have a young lady in our office as an example. Her name is Michaela. Yeah, we know Michaela. You know Michaela? You know Michaela? Yeah, absolutely. Great lady. Yeah. So I met Michaela at Sprouts. It's a grocery store. I used to work at Target back in the day, so I have a little bit of an affection for people who work in retail or whatever. But she's a neat lady, and uh, we hired her. And that lady has so many more skills than what we know. Mm. And every time that I give her another task, I go... It's like you're unearthing a discovered treasure, like this un, like undiscovered treasure. You're like, wow. Like, I mean, seriously, I'm going, ah, and she knocks it out. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, Michaela, is it possible for you to go to the furniture store and to pick out some furniture for our new office? And then, bam, hey, Michaela, could you? It's baby steps. I'm always uncovering a new thing. So at first, I'm like, hey, is there any way you could sit in on this meeting and take notes? Ah, angel, boom, knocks it out. Next thing. Next thing, next thing. Pretty soon you start to see if she's been diligent with a little, you could probably give her more. Yeah. And so we look around the office and we start to realize we need to utilize the resources. So you have a good voice. Thank you. You know you have a good voice. <laughs> Do you sing a lot? Some. What's one of your favorite gospel songs? Oh, what can we do? Uh Amazing Grace, you can sing. Is that one of your favorites? That's my dad's favorite, my favorite. Uh, Why Should I Feel Discouraged? I Own the Sparrow. Really? Oh, yeah. You do that? Do you sing that? Yeah, we sang it before in Spanish. Well, I used to have a salsa band at ORU. Really? All yeah. I'm saying is that you are a guy. I don't know if the Thrivers are ready for it. Maybe we maybe we unveil it <laughs> here. But I'm saying is like, maybe if you want to, you just tell me, give me the eye. And I'm like, but I'm saying it's like, you are a musically talented guy. I used to sit in the church service. Those of you who don't believe in the same thing as me, it's, it's okay. But we used to sit, <laughs> I used to sit in a church service and I would hear you and you are like, kind of like a, I think a lot of people view angels as like an effeminate, like a kind of a female thing, but you're like a man angel. I mean, seriously, your voice, I'm just saying, Thank it's you. great. Thank you. And it used to sing into my soul. Wow. So it wasn't sing. you just would sing and I'm like, bam, that guy, there he is. So what I'm saying is you're a guy who can sing. And if you walk into an office, what is the context in which you would sing? So, you know, you maybe get coffee in the morning and Jose is like, why should the shadows, you know, and you're like, are you, are you singing right now? You know, and it's kind of like you're, you know, but you start, but you can sing. That's an untapped resource. That's something you can do. You are a designer. Yeah. I know an incredible amount of knowledge about the 1989 Major League Baseball season. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I need to laugh at I'm just, I know that, like, I'm just saying, like, I know that Brett Butler was an amazing leadoff hitter in that year. I know that Kevin Mitchell hit 47 home runs that year for the National League and the, the top and the pros. I know that Mark McGuire, you know, hurt himself, but he hit 33 home runs. I know these things because I have a, a disturbing past, but also I know these things <laughs> because I know it's an untapped resource. Yeah. So if you, if you go into your office right now, there's people you can sing. You can design, but I'm going to go a little deeper. Yeah. You can connect with people in a way that is unbelievable. I've had, and I'm not exaggerating, probably not a dozen, but maybe seven people mm -hmm. come to me and go, Jose talked to me today and he really helped me, um, help me get my head screwed on straight. Yeah. And I've had a couple years, 
probably, you know, half dozen guys come to me and go, man, Jason knows a ton about design. He's really helped Mm -hmm. me simplify that idea. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we look at our business and we have these resources we're not tapping into. We're not, mm. we're not, we're not running around in our eyes. So I'm asking you right now, just think about is it is as an action step. Ask yourself, what are the skills that I have in my office? Make a spreadsheet. Up. Do it. I encourage you. Make a spreadsheet of all the people on your team and ask what are the skills they have. And you're gonna find one guy in your team can sing. One guy, man, he's funny. One lady, she's a great decorator. One lady, she can sell. One lady, she can connect. One guy, he can lead. One guy, he can, he can put the bongos. Bongos? He can put the bongos. One guy, he can, and you what you want to do is you want to find all those resources and find a way. So one of our people on our team right now, do you know Sharita from ORU? Sharita Bent? Sharita O'Neill? Do you know her? I don't, uh, the name sounds familiar, but I don't know if I can put a name with the face yet. She sings like an angel. Mm. So I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I literally, I've talked to her and I'm going, I need you to be here. And she's kind of she's an unbelievably smart lady, but she can sing. So she's a friend of my wife's for a long time. She can sing. And I'm going, man, you have an underutilized skill. How do we help you? How do we bring you in to help thrivers? So I'm just asking as a homework item right now, what are the underutilized skills on your team? And right Clay, now? if I may add an action step. Yeah. One of the things that I value about being Uh, a servant leader here working is that you make room during our Monday meetings uh, when Marshall leads or stand up meetings as well. You give room because thrivers might be asking, well, how do I know the underutilized resources? Well, you make room. One of the things you said, Hey, highlight of the week, what's the story of the week? And you can, you can see people's personalities come out and you probably hear something or see something about someone you probably didn't know if you were just in a regular work environment. In other words, what I'm saying is you guys make room in order for those to flourish. I don't want to get woo woo. I don't okay, want to don't, get woo woo. Then don't. Well, I guess I'll get woo woo. Okay. <laughs> woo woo. You know, <laughs> the thing is, is that like, you know this, but I love both you guys like brothers. Yeah. Yeah. We know that. So, this morning, Thrivers, I'll pull it out here on my phone. Jose, in the meantime, if you could lead us through an eye on the sparrow, maybe, you know, oh, like some sort of, so it's not you awkward. You want <laughs> Well, that that's, <laughs> that's something different, but that's... Okay, so here we go. This is... I'm going to pull this up. My brother sends me a text today, and he says, uh, Dad fell, hurt shoulder, paramedics came at St. Francis South, uh, broke shoulder, let me know what I can do today. I can help you whatever you need. He's at St. Francis. Um, we c- agreed he cannot come home until a social worker gets involved. Hospital bed, um, electric wheelchair, lift in home care, transportation. Mm. I'm a guy. I'm a, hu- I'm a, I'm a human. Um, today's been the worst day of my entire life. Today. This mm. actual day. It was, it was the worst. So this morning, you know, I dealt with what you're, I'm a, I'm a dad, I'm a kid's, I'm a, he's my dad. I'm his son. Yeah. And you say, I think you're a business guy. I'm a, I'm somebody's son. And so they find out, Hey, your dad has what looks to be brain cancer. So that's why he's had these problems is he doesn't have, we thought it was ALS. He looks like he has that, but what's causing this rapid progression is he has brain cancer. And, and so, so literally, I'm not exaggerating. Today, I literally talked about, do you want to help him? If he's in a vegetable state, do you want that to happen or do you want to cut the, cut the cord? Oh, wow. That was my conversation I had before nine this morning. Wow. So I came in today looking at you guys, trying to talk about, this training we're going to do, trying to talk about business. And that's my, 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 my what I was, that's what I was dealing with. Mm-hmm. And you're dealing with something and you're dealing with something. You're a dad, you're a husband, you're a dad, you're a good guy. You got a lot of stuff going on and everybody is dealing with something. So how does it relate to what we're talking about? Everyone on your team has an, un, is an underutilized resource. If you don't understand, there's two layers. One is their skill, and one is who are they as a human. 
And you, if you can, if possible, you want to try. So I know it's hard. But you want to try to find what are the person's skills like, you know, but also who are they as a human? And you want to somehow connect because that's the kind of stuff we're going to be talking about when we get there, wherever where that is. Yeah. So I just encourage everybody to, to, to really look at your team and go, gosh, what are the skills? We've got a young guy on our team right now, I, I, Eric. And I, Eric, I look at Eric. He's in our studio right now. Uh, you, you know Eric. Oh, yeah. I can feel his integrity. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can feel it. Yeah. It's not a beard thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying I can literally feel that integrity. Yeah. And so, you know, how do you, how do you utilize him? Yeah. And it seems weird. It's probably not appropriate, but this is true. I'm taking a shower because my five kids, my kids are taking my shampoo. They're taking all my resources. So I'm now like taking a shower with like some sort of like Dawn dish soap or something. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's a real talk. You know what I mean? It's real talk. So yeah. I'm taking a shower and I'm, I'm literally, and it's probably inappropriate. I'm thinking about, I'm literally taking a shower. I mean, this truly really happened. And I'm thinking about, gosh, how can we better utilize Jose? Yeah. Mm. I literally had that conversation. I mean, I literally thought, had that thought pattern yeah. a lot. Yeah. How can we utilize Eric? How can we, and I'm just telling you, Thrivers, if we're not asking that question, you do not possibly, it's impossible if you'd have every skill. So you've got to ask yourself, what are the underutilized resources that your team has? And I just I don't think we're doing a good job about it. I don't think we're doing a good job. I think we're, I think a lot of us, we're not, we're not doing a good job. I think we're just asking the question kind of like, well, what is your resume? Screw the resume. Right. Who is this person? What are the skills they have that I'm not utilizing? I think it's very important. So I want to, yeah. I want to, this is a concluding thought. You've seen this. Yeah. You've seen this. Yeah. As an employee. Right. Teammate. Yes. How do you see people's skill sets being underutilized? How have you seen it in your past previous jobs or previous things? How have you seen that? Because I want to, I want to hear from your perspective. Man, I think for me at times, if the leader is insecure, oftentimes they'll ignore people's potential yeah. because they're afraid that somebody will become better than them or take their spot mm. or replace them. And I've seen that so many times in the church, but yeah. I've also seen it in the business world when a sponsor or an upline feels threatened by talent. And I think that what I love about Thrive is that you guys don't get threatened by talent, but you feel the fire of talent to make them better. That's just one simple sample the example that I've seen in my in my career. Well, in quick disclaimer, ministry. Thrivers, I don't want to throw Jose under the bus here, but I don't have any talent. So he's sort of, you know, I don't have any, I don't, anybody at all who walks into a room who's not falling over, I'm going, that guy's got more talent than me. So, okay, so what, what are your thoughts? I mean, do you, do you see that a lot where you see... I could, I, you know, Devin, I'll call him out by name. Devin, you love Devin. Yeah. Devin was, uh, we all know him here. He, he was hired as a designer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he's a pretty good designer, but good we guy. found out he's actually better as a developer. Yeah. And so he's kicking butt on the development side. Yeah. yeah. That's a good example. We didn't, we gave him that chance and he lived up to it and exceeded it. And I'll just say with Devin, Devin, you're watching right now. I mean, Devin's a guy that I literally have asked, like, you know, what, how are we underutilizing Devin? And Devin, you probably know this, but you've seen your pay go up as we've asked ourselves, what else can Devin do? And I just encourage all the thrivers right now to ask yourself, you know, what resources am I underutilizing? Mm -hmm. You're paying these people to come to work every day. Why not spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, mentally engage people at work? Right. Why not? Yeah. There we go. It's good. Step number 11. Crack down on parasites and small credit card fees. Clay? Well, uh, you have a lot of expenses that um, will eat away at you if you don't look at it. So I'm going to give the Thrivers a little challenge. We have some trainings coming up on this. It's big. I talked about it on our on a Monday morning meeting, our yes, Monday yes. morning meeting. But a lot of people go, well, how did you build DJ Connection? I mean, you had to buy like... I, I get that question all the time. I feel like a lot of smart business owners ask me this because they, they get it. But a lot of people pull me aside and they go... I'm just doing the math. If you did 4,000 events, 80 events per weekend, what did the system cost? People ask that. What did the equipment cost, the speakers? I get a lot of people ask me that question. And I say, eh, it's about $900,000. And they go, $900,000 you spent on equipment. 
speakers, lights, <laughs> nine hundred grand. Well, yeah, well, this this mic, I used to have a different mic. I'm still still feel psychologically naked, but <laughs> the mic was like the S. It's it's SH fifty five fifty five SH microphone. Sure, microphone. It's about one hundred and sixty dollars. Then you have a cord. This is an XLR cable. An XLR to an XLR cable is typically about thirty bucks. It runs into a mixer. The mixing board will cost you about five hundred dollars. It runs into an amplifier, but it's a crown. We had a crown amplifier. It's called a CE2000. Now there's something different, I'm sure. Those are about you know thousand bucks. Then you have a power conditioner that makes sure that your um, speakers, like if you have a, a power surge or an electrical surge, it doesn't blow up your stuff. That's a couple hundred dollars. Then you have a light controller, an American DJ light controller. That's about three hundred dollars if you're doing the math here. And we'll add it up on the screen here. But then you have the speakers. Okay, but the Eons JBL made the Eon speakers. Those are each you know about. Eight hundred dollars piece. Then you're on a mic stand, or you're on a speaker stand. Each speaker stand's about a hundred dollars, and you add it all up, and you have the lighting, and all, it's about ten thousand dollars. So ten thousand dollars times eighty, it's a lot of gear. People say, "Man, how did you save up the money?" Well, I'll tell you how we do it. Mm. Small amounts. This is called. If you read the book called The Automatic Millionaire, it's called the latte, the latte, the latte. L A T T E the latte expense. It's the latte. A lot of us spend four dollars at you know Starbucks. Not think about it. We spend three dollars at you know our favorite convenience store buying a candy bar and maybe buying a, a pizza or buying whatever. Well, if you add it up, four dollars. So just to give you an example. I am thirty five. So if I wanted to save a million dollars between now and age forty five, how much would I have to save? Do the math on it. It's about two hundred and seventy bucks a day. Two hundred and seventy eight bucks a day. How do I know that? I think about these things. So what I'm saying is you so you you save small increments, and that's what allows you to get financial momentum in your life. And so what happens is a lot of times in business we just don't think about these expenses. So I encourage everybody right now, pause, time out. Whoop. Man, what are the small fees that are killing me? Hmm. And you probably have, I mean, if you're selling cupcakes, you're selling plumbing, you're selling haircuts, whatever you're selling, you probably have 3% of all your revenue going back right now to the credit card company. So just raise your prices 3%. Someone says, I don't know if I could charge my extra, my current customers 3% more, they'd freak out. Fine. The new customers charge them, you know, 3% more. Someone says, well, I, I don't know what other fees are killing me. What about bank fees? What about your ATM fee? What about your... Uh, Whatever fee, just go through and look at all your fees. Look at all the small fees that are kind of eating you alive. If you're, if you imagine you're a whole person, and there's a little parasite on you going, and I, I guess in my mind that's how parasite sounds like. But if a parasite's eating three yeah. percent of your body, yeah, I mean your body, three percent of your body, you'd be a little bit annoyed. <laughs> if it ate three percent of your foot, you'd be like, I don't know if that's good, you know. But that's what's happening in your business. You have something eating 3%, 2%, 4%. So we need to go ahead and make a list this month of all the expenses we have. And let's start to think about how can we build a wall to block ourselves from those expenses? Or how can we pass those expenses on to the customer? We, ha we have to find a way. We cannot just be eaten alive by those small expenses. I hope, I hope that's Boom. clarifying. Yeah, excellent, sense. excellent, excellent. So step number 12. Pump up the price if possible. We're talking here about the 17 steps to maximizing your profit margins. And I'm going to read you a notable quote here by Mr. Steve Jobs as we're talking about pump up the price if possible. Um, I think I'll, some of us have heard of Steve Jobs, right? Why, Stuart? I, I've, I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah we've Clay? both heard of Steve Jobs. Yes. There you go. <laughs> well, this is a notable quotable that he says. He says this: "The only problem with Microsoft is that they just have no taste." Ooh. 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 They have absolutely no taste. I mean, I don't mean that in a small way. I mean that in a big way. <laughs> in a sense that they <laughs> oh, don't so think good. of original ideas. They don't bring much culture into their products, Clay. <laughs> well, okay, Steve Jobs obviously was a little biased there. He didn't like <laughs> didn't like Microsoft. But what we're talking about is that, um, and this is something you think about, is that Steve Jobs focused so much on, on bringing culture, this experience, this think different mentality that the, the laptop you have, the laptop you have, those are three times more yeah. than a typical PC laptop. That's true. If it's Literally. a personal computer laptop, a typical Microsoft-based laptop, what, yep. you can buy one for 500 bucks or yeah. 600 bucks? Absolutely. And yeah. those are $1,500. Yeah. That's probably $2,500 right there. Boom. That right there, 
is a lot of Thrive 15 subscribers right there. But that's what you're buying, Thrivers. But anyway, so those are that's expensive stuff. Yeah. So um, it, what does this have to do with what we're talking about? What we're saying is because he built something so awesome, Steve Jobs built something so awesome, he and his team at Apple, they could charge significantly more, like three times more than a typical uh, personal computer brand or a Microsoft you know, uh, powered brand. I mean, it's three and a half times more. So we're talking about, we're going to give you five ways that it can help you kind of uh, raise the prices, if you will. Okay. So one is inflation. I don't want to get too woo-woo. I kind of do, but I don't like it too woo-woo. But the cost of inflation is 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 ma- is is ma- marvelously insane. So here's the deal: <laughs> is every year the government, whether it's Republican or Democrat, they print more money than what they have. They spend more money than they have. So the only way to do it is to print more money, physical dollars. So let's pretend we have a a, a container of Kool Aid. Maybe we can put a graphic on the screen here of Kool Aid. Yeah. If you have Kool Aid. And uh, you know we all like Kool Aid. You have you have a favorite flavor of Kool Aid? Was it cherry for you or grape? Grape. Okay. Uh, so yeah. you have the grape Kool Aid. Fruit punch. Fruit punch. Wow. <laughs> very very controversial. But if you if you have a container of that and the Kool Aid guy's going, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you remember that guy? He was always scary to me. <laughs> yeah. When he would walk into your break, normal life, break through walls. He'd yeah. break through the wall oh and go, God. oh yeah. yeah. And you're like, Kool Aid guy, I'm just trying to get a drink. But anyway, <laughs> so he would break through the wall, of the sheetrock, and just no regard for your the cost needed to fix it. But it's he, true. Yeah. Oh yeah, costing thousands of dollars. <laughs> he comes in and then he gives you this grape Kool Aid. Right. If you want to make more for your friends and you're out of those packets, remember the packets where you go yeah. and you shake it, you pop it. If you're out of if you're out of Kool Aid and you put more water in, if the more water you add, the more it devalues or or deflavors the Kool Aid. Yeah. Over time, you're eventually like, bro, that's like purple water. Mm-hmm. Right? No, whatever, like, dude. You've definitely devalued this to the point that you know. Anyway, I'm not sure people talk like that, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you've de- you've 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 filled it up. You've inflated it. You've de- you've you've put so much water in it that you've totally deflavored it. That's the way inflation works. So everybody, right now, action step: you, you, you. We all need to increase what we're making per year by how much? Three percent every year, just to keep up with the inflation rate. Meaning how the, the, their value of your money is worth less and less and less every year. So very, very important. Now, second deal is packaging and rebranding. These are five ways to increase the value of your product. Okay, One is just increase 3% a year because of inflation. Okay, I mean, every, every company in the world does that. But you're probably not doing it because you're a genius, but you need to do it. Okay, The second is packaging and rebranding. Okay, People will pay more for a piece of jewelry that's presented in, presented in a Tiffany box than they would for a piece of jewelry uh, packaged in like, you know, a Kmart bag or something. So if it's like a Kmart ba- ba- bag or a Kmart, you know, a uh, little Walmart bag, that's much different than a Godiva bag or a, a Tiffany box or a whatever. So we need to make sure our branding is tight. And most of us, not you, I'm sure it's just other people, but you got to make sure your branding is awesome. So I ask you right now, is your branding as good as, as, as Godiva? Mm. Is it as good as Tiffany? Probably not. I mean, pro- you for sure. But the guy who's hacking, he's using your account. He's like, can we share an account? We can save $9 a month if we work together. I mean, <laughs> that guy, he's probably a hacker. He's probably not, you know. But your brand, you got to make sure your packaging and your branding is great. Right. Okay, it's very, very important. Now, the third is the industry average. You charge, okay, check it out. You can charge an artificially low price just because you always have. I see this all the time in home construction. It makes me nuts. I saw it today. I got so I got so frustrated. I almost said bad words. <laughs> Seriously, I talked to a guy today. He's a good friend of mine. He lives up in Minnesota. It frustrates me. It makes me crazy. He says, "Hey, I, I'm not making any money." And I'm like, "I'm I'm I'm, I'm not my human. I'm trying to take a little break. Look, like, just a ten minute break. Just let me have a break, you know." So take a break. Boop boop boop. I go, hey Jake, what's up, buddy? He's like, "Hey man." Um, God, this is impossible to make any money here. I'm like, what are you doing? So we talk about it. We dive in. It's just, well, you know, point is he's charging a price that's like crazy, ridiculous low to replace the doors in homes. Like that's what he does. He replaces doors and windows. Yeah. Why are, and I'm like, why are you charging that? Like, why are you charging such a low price? And he's like, well, that's what I'm known for. Jake people like jake quit doing it (laughs) you know if you're known for being the low cost guy what's the point so i was like jake i really don't think you're famous no no rip on you you're not famous 
the world doesn't know you as the low price guy, but people refer each other. Quit doing it. Just go, yeah, that was last year's pricing. This year we're charging X amount. Boom, boom. You got to quit doing it. Don't charge as artificially low price based upon what you've always done. Quit staying loyal to dysfunction. So many of us are loyal to dysfunction. Wow. Um, a little side trail, a little side side kind of just kind of like little bonus here for you. Um, you know, every DJ in Tulsa that I've ever met previous to our company was an idiot. So there's probably some good DJs in Tulsa I didn't meet, but most of the DJs I met are idiots. So they work all the time. Uh, they don't make any money. And I remember talking to one of the guys in town. I'm like, so I'm, I, this is a true story. I had this conversation. I said, we were at the Summit Club. It's a high end. It's like a country club for you know, it's in the sky. It's in a big tower. It's a, it's like a country club in a big what office tower. Is sure. how you describe. Downtown. You guys been to the Summit yep. Club? Yes. Yeah. So I'm talking to this guy, and he's like, "Oh yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I charge X amount per wedding." And I'm like, "Do you make any money?" Well, you know, I make enough money to you know live on. I mean, I just I'm like, "Why do you charge this price?" Well, I've always done it. Well, how come you charge per hour? You know, every wedding, every DJ in Tulsa used to charge per hour, four hours, six hundred bucks, roughly. That was the mm. deal. $600 for four hours. You get a DJ. Why do you charge based on the hour? Well, I've always done it. Have you ever thought about doing something else? Well, no one else does it. A lot of times we're just loyal to this dysfunction. Mm. So I had to just like change it. I said unlimited time, you know, with every package. Now we're making a lot of money. So I'm just saying like you got to, we, we're, we're all loyal to something that doesn't make any sense. Is it a lack of confidence or what? Well, they- it's do. I mean, I mean, it's a little bit weird, but let me walk you through it. Um, we're talking about politi- politics right now. Yeah. Are you watching the politics? At a little, all? little bit. Are you watching it all? Are you watching? Si, senor. Okay. So let's just say that you hate Donald Trump. Let's say that that's the preposition. We, we, we work off the assumption that you hate Donald Trump. Let's say that you hate Bernie Sanders. Let's just say that you hate, you hate. I'm not saying you do, but this is the assumption. Sure, sure. Um, so many people are concerned with a candidate who doesn't say something that every other candidate says. So you're saying that you wouldn't back the Republican Party if you didn't get the nomination? Oh, no. You know, you're saying you wouldn't support the Democrat nominee if you didn't get the nomination? Oh, no. <laughs> you're saying you don't agree with every tenant that the Democratic Party have, has had for years? Oh, no. You're saying you wouldn't support the Republican Party? No, no. You're saying, you know, and it just, it just, oh, it just, it's, oh, it's too much. Um, let's just go with what's normal. The number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. We are Jared and Jennifer Johnson. We own Platinum Pest and Lawn and are located in Owasso, Oklahoma. And we have been working with Thrive for Business Coaching for almost a year now. Yeah. So so what we want to do is we want to share some wins with you guys uh, that, that we've had by working with Thrive. Um, first of all, um, we're on the top page of Google now. Okay. Um, I just want to let you know what type of accomplishment this is. Our competition, Orkin, Terminex, they're both $1.3 billion companies. They both have two to 3,000 pages of content um, attached to their website. So to basically go from uh, virtually non-existent on Google to up on the top page is, is really saying something. Um, but that's come by being uh, diligent to the systems that, that Thrive has, um, by, be, by uh, being consistent and diligent on, on doing podcasts um, and staying on top of those podcasts um, to really help uh, with, with getting up on, uh, uh, with their listing and our ranking there with Google. And also, we've been um, trying to get Google reviews, you know, asking our customers for reviews. And now we're the highest rated and most reviewed pest and lawn company in the Tulsa area. And that's really helped with our conversion rate. And the number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. Wait, say, say that again. How much are we up? 411%. Okay. So 411% um, we're up with, with our new customers. Amazing. Right. right. So not only do we have more customers calling in, we're able to close those deals at a much higher rate than we were before. Right now, our closing rate is about 85%, and that's largely uh, due to, uh, first of all, like our Google reviews that we've gotten people really see that our customers are happy, but also we have a script that we follow. And so when customers call in, they get all the information that they need. Uh, that script has been refined time and time again. Uh, it wasn't a one and done deal. We it was a system that we that we followed with Thrive in in the refining process, and that has obviously um, the four hundred eleven percent shows that 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 system works. Yeah. So here's a big one for you. So last week alone, our booking percentage was ninety one percent. We actually booked more deals, more new customers last year 
than we did the first five months, or I'm sorry, the first, we, we booked more deals last week than we did the first five months of last year from before we, we, we worked with Thrive. So again, we booked more deals last week than the first five months of last year. And it's incredible. But, but the reason why we have that success by implementing uh, the systems that, that Thrive has taught us and, and, and helped us out with. Some of those systems that we've implemented are group interviews. That way we've really been able to uh, come up with a really great team. Um, we've created and implemented checklists. That way everything um, gets done and it gets done right. Uh, we, it creates accountability. Uh, we're able to make sure that everything uh, gets done properly, both out in the field and also in our office. Um, and also doing the podcast like Jared had mentioned that has really, really contributed to our success. But that like I said, the diligence and um, consistency in doing those in that system has really, um, really been a, a big blessing in our lives. And also, um, you know, it's really shown that we've gotten the success from following those systems. Yeah. So before working with Thrive, uh, we were basically stuck. Um, really no new growth um, w with our with our business. Um, and we, we were in a rut and we okay. didn't know. Oh, sorry. The last three years, our customer base had pretty much stayed the same. We weren't shrinking, but we weren't really growing either. Yeah, and so we didn't we didn't really know where to go, what to do, uh, how to get out of this rut that we're in. Uh, but Thrive helped us with that. You know, they, they implemented those systems. That they taught us those systems. They taught us the knowledge that we needed um, in order to succeed. Now it's been a grind. Absolutely, it's been a grind this last year. Um, but we're but we're getting those fruits uh, from from that hard work and, and the diligent effort that, that we're able to put into them. Um, so again, we were in a rut. Thrive helped us get out of that rut. Um, and uh, and if you're thinking about um, working with, with, with Thrive, quit thinking about it and just do it. Um, do the action, um, and you'll get the results. It, it will take hard work and discipline, um, but but uh, but that's what it's going to take in order to in order to, to really succeed. So uh, we just want to give a big shout out to Thrive, a big thank you out there to, to Thrive. We wouldn't be where we at, where we're at now um, without their help. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Moore. I'm a pediatric dentist. Through our new digital marketing plan, we have seen a market increase in the number of new patients that we're seeing every month, year over year. One month, for example, we went from 110 new patients the previous year to over 180 new patients um, in the same month. And overall, our average is running about 40 to 42 percent increase month over month, year over year. The group of people required to implement our new digital marketing plan is immense, starting with a business coach, videographers, photographers, web designers. Back when I graduated dental school in 1985, nobody advertised. The only marketing that was ethically allowed in everybody's eyes was mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing. By choosing to use the services, you're choosing to use a proof and turnkey marketing and coaching system that will grow your practice and get you the results that you're looking for. I went to the University of Oklahoma College of Dentistry, graduated in 1983, and then I did my pediatric dental residency at Baylor College of Dentistry from 1983 to 1985. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I wanna to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy is just amazing. He's, he's This kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours. On the day-to-day, -day, he does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies. He's at the top. He has a team of uh, business coaches, videographers, and graphic designers and web developers, and they run 160 companies every single week. So think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies. So in the weekly, he's running 160 companies. Um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up and he teaches people a 13-step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system. 
critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into uh, or organizing everything in their head to building into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and, and that's what I like him most about it. He's like, he's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down. Um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't, his highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or uh, you know, navigating competition and, 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 and an economy that's like, I remember we got closed down for three months. He helped us navigate on how to stay open, how to, how to get back open, how to um, uh, just survive through all the COVID shutdowns, lockdowns. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine and we just wanna give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark. Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just wanna say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys, we appreciate you and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house, right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. As you can see, it's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing. And this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing. And this is our new team. We went from four to 14 and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman. So we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grew us 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. Whoa. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the world's highest rated and most reviewed business workshops because we teach you what you need to know to grow. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. 
And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big, uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, and I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever. And we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. And now you may be thinking, what does it actually cost to attend an in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop? Well, good news. The tickets are $250 or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes, they're $250 or whatever price you can afford. I grew up without money, and I know what it's like to live without money. So if you're out there today and you want to attend our in-person two-day interactive business workshop, all you got to do is go to thrivetimeshow.com to request those tickets. And if you can't afford $250, we have scholarship pricing available to make it affordable for you.